Good morning, everybody. We're so glad you're here in person and online. We celebrate Palm Sunday today, so let's lift our voices to our King. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you, sing holy, and holy. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And hold. Sing, I will build my life. Sing it out. And I
I try to hide you and steal you away. They try to keep you inside of the grave. The enemy fought you, he tried, but he lost. When we cried for freedom, you tore down the walls. The weight of our burden, you carried it all. Our fears and our failures. Dead on the cross, you cannot be stopped. Mover of mountains, breaker of chains, Jesus is trying. Shout out your praise, miracle maker, you're mighty to save. Awesome in power, relentless in love. You cannot be stopped.
we're going to sing, I stand amazed in his presence. Sing it out. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And wonder how he could love me. A sinner condemned unclean. Sing it. Good morning. Welcome to Clarksburg Baptist Church. It's so good to see all of you here and to have all of you online. The last time I looked, I just logged on a couple minutes ago, and we have over 70 screens joining us today. So that's, yeah, let's all say hello to them. <laughs> if you want to, feel free to jump on and just say, give them a shout out and say, hi, we miss you. We're excited. Um, I did that. A few minutes ago, just told them that uh, we were glad to have them today online. So it's so good to have you guys. We have a few announcements this morning. First of all, today we are hosting a prayer walk here from 2 to 4 p.m. There is going to be um, an opportunity for our church family to gather together in a focused prayer time. You can come by the church on the Monroe side of the office between 2 and 4, and we'll give you some direction for uh, the prayer in the downtown area. And then you can also um, go just pray in your own neighborhood if you want to. So we would love to have you join that. The last time I looked at the weather, it looked like around this time, maybe around 3, 4 o'clock, uh, the clouds are supposed to split open and it's supposed to be uh, a good thing, not, not rain split open, but uh, uh, clear away. So hopefully that will be wonderful thing for us to all uh, join in prayer and pray together. 
Then we're going to start tonight having an Easter devotional. Pastor Phil is going to do an Easter devotional every night leading up until Easter. You can join us each night at 7 p.m. on Facebook. And we're going to look at the last words of Jesus together. And then I hope that you join us on Easter Sunday. We're going to have an 8 a.m. Uh, drive-in service in the church parking lot so that as many people can come as they possibly want. We would encourage you to please invite your friends, invite your family, invite everybody, and let's see if we can fill up the church parking lot with people at 8 o'clock on Easter morning. We're not going to have the in-person service at 10 that morning, but we will have the live stream at 10, so you won't want to miss that either. All right, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and we will start our service this morning. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this wonderful day that you've given us, God. Thank you for the rain that's going to bring forth the beautiful flowers and grass and trees. Dear Lord, I pray that you would please just bless this service today. Dear God, I pray that you would bless each of the people that came today out in the rain to get here this morning. And I pray for each person listening online and watching online. I pray, Lord, that you would please open our hearts to what you have for us. And please touch us and let it change us. Let us leave here different. In your precious name I pray, amen. This is a story about Easter. One day, Jesus came to earth to um, to feed people and to help people if they were sick. <laughs> and he cleaned their feet. Jesus was hung up on the cross. At night, the guards took him down, it wrapped him up in cloth, and hid him in the tomb. He died on the cross. On Friday, Jesus died on the cross. Wait. On Friday, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus had put in Jesus in a tomb. Jesus died for us. Mary and Mary King, the visit. Jesus is too. Joseph put um, Jesus in a tomb, and Mary Madeline is very sad. And there was a big earthquake, so big that the guards were scared, and there was an angel who pushed. Three days later, Mary went back to the tomb, and but Jesus wasn't there, and the stone was rolled away. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, and the angel said that Jesus wasn't there. Three days later, a angel comes down, make a giant earthquake, and then he, then the angel opens up the tomb. Mary and Madeline went to the tomb to put spices on Jesus' body. But when they got there, an angel of the Lord appeared. Three days later, Mary Madeline went to put spices on Jesus' blood. When they got there, the tomb was empty. Then, guess what happened? No! days later in the morning two women who came to the tomb an angel fell down the guards fell like dead men the angel said don't be scared tell it because Jesus is not here he has risen tell everyone the good news so then Mary finally found Jesus and then, and then 
She was so happy, she couldn't even believe it. So she ran so fast, and she told everybody that Jesus is alive. And they were trying to sing the band back in the truck, destroying a little bit of fear and effort. Today, she came back to life. Jesus went to his disciples and said, Touch me, see if I'm a ghost. But they touched him, but he wasn't a ghost. Jesus told him then to go and find and make disciples everywhere. And then the disciples. And then, well, Jesus was the only disciple. So, then there was an angel that said, And then Jesus said, I need to go home in heaven and and I'll and I'll set up a place for you in heaven. He was alive and um he the angel took him back to heaven. He is still alive in everybody's heart. Jesus died to give him a life. Go tell everyone. That's the story of Easter. The end. This is a story about We love our kids. Let's give it up for them again. Man. Great job. Man, that, the story of Easter is so amazing, and we're just excited to be able to celebrate that together with our whole church family next week. So make sure you invite some people. It's the perfect time to be spontaneous. They can just pull their car up. No you know, seats need to be reserved or anything like that. Um, and uh, so... We're super duper excited about that for next week. Let's uh, go ahead and pray. But before we do, we want to thank you for continuing to uh, give and support Clarksburg Baptist Church through your tithes and your offerings. Oh, yeah, I can take this off now. Uh, and uh, you know how to give. You can give online, uh, you know, through our giving app or on our website. There's also, if you're here in person, uh, there should be a envelope in front of you and you can use our little giving box the black box back there um, and you can do that as well so let's go ahead and pray and thank god for all he's done for us thank him for easter and thank him for our kids uh, and just how god's using them dear jesus we love you god i pray uh, as we open up your word in this last uh, sermon on the book of james that you would uh, continue to speak to our hearts god help us to to be wise people, God. Help us to, um, as we interact throughout the day, ask you uh, what decisions you would have us to make. Uh, God, help us to see right and wrong. God, help us to know when to act and when not to act. Help us to know when to speak and when to shut up. God, help us to know uh, what you want for our lives, God. Just direct us and guide us in all we do. In your name we pray. Amen. Have you ever had a friend that you could just tell absolutely everything, right? Someone that you could just spill your guts to about the silliest stuff. Remember back when you were kids and you just sit around and you just talk about all kinds of stuff? I remember uh, I had a friend named Doug. And we would just sit around and talk about all the things that you could ever think about. If that's you, if you had somebody like that when you were a kid, go ahead and drop that down in the comments. Even if you're here in person, it's a cool way for us to just communicate and to be able to, to talk. If you remember a childhood friend like that that you could just spill all your guts to, go ahead and drop that in the comments right now. 
But me and Doug used to stay up till like, you know, three, four in the morning. We'd talk about everything. We'd just laugh and laugh. One time I remember specifically uh, talking about uh, making a gutter system around the top of his room so that we could put soda in it so that we could drink out of it whenever we wanted to. And for some reason, as kids, we would just laugh until we cried, thinking about all these silly things. And it's awesome to have those friends like that. And then next, after that, we'd talk about all these silly things, and then we'd go raid his, uh, his kitchen cabinet, and we'd end up eating like New England clam chowder at three in the morning or something like that. But it's so cool to be able to have someone that you can spill all your guts to. And those friends are few and far between. And we're going to see that here in chapter 5, that we have someone that we can go to and tell everything. Can you believe that we've done 12 weeks on this book of James? I don't know about you, but I have, through this series, as we've been paralleling with Francis Chan, I've really fell in love and more in love with this book of James. But the end of this chapter, this last chapter uh, in chapter 5, he ends this letter to these persecuted Christians with a bang. So we're going to be in verse 13 of chapter 5. And this is what he says. Paul says, or excuse me, James says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, appointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So James says, are any of you hurting? Are any of you sick? Pray for them. Is someone rejoicing? Well, then pray with them. Sing with them. Is someone in need of something? Pray for them. This is a big part of what being a church is is supporting, praying, encouraging one another, lifting one another up. We're trying to become a better praying church. That's why we're trying to have this uh, prayer walk today from two to four. And and maybe it's more like a prayer drive, you know, if it's uh, pouring out rain. But we want to be a better praying church because a church that prays together can make a difference. I know you could do something else. I know there's other things that you could do, but let's make space for prayer. Our first response to everything should be taking it to the Lord in prayer, thanking, seeking, crying out, asking, take it all to God. No matter if you feel like it's silly, no matter if you feel like it's mundane or too small to take to him, take it to him in prayer. Some of you have those close friends that you literally tell everything, even the boring stuff that no one else would want to listen to. You take it to your closest friends first. And God wants you to take everything to him. Nothing is too small. Take all your concerns to God. And all those concerns of those people that are around you. But sometimes we get stuck in judging the person that's hurting instead of praying for them, right? I knew this was going to happen. I told them that if they kept doing this, this was going to happen. She deserves to be put in her place. We have those feelings of uh, instead of wanting to pray for them and praying for God to do something. Sometimes we're happy to see people fall because uh, they've wronged us or hurt us in some way. Sometimes we even judge why people are rejoicing. Oh, they just think there's God's greatest gift on earth. Sometimes we judge why people are sick. Oh, I bet they were messed up in some kind of sin and that's why, well, that's why they're sick. None of those things are our place to say. Instead, we should pray with them. Pray for them. Pray it works out. Pray for their good. Even the people that we feel like might not deserve it, pray with them. Maybe you're upset and you're tempted to gossip about somebody. Instead, the better thing to do is to pray for them, right? Talk to God about them if you want to talk about somebody. Take it to him in prayer. Even those people that two months ago said they were repenting of this sin, and now all of a sudden you notice that they're back in it again. Hey, instead of judging them and jumping on them, pray for them. You can do something. If you know someone that's struggling, care about them enough to pray for them. And then let them know you're doing it. And then really do it. Don't just say praying for you and then never say a a prayer for them. God should be the first 
person that we go to every single time? Is he our first love? Is he the one that we uh, take our things to? Take it to him in prayer because it works. That's what it says in verse 15. It says, the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Prayer opens up possibilities. And when someone is sick, take it to the one that can heal them. When someone is uh, in sin, take it to the one that can forgive them. When someone is struggling, love them. Reach out to them. Pray. Give them a chance to lean on you and open up to you. Maybe there's something that they need to confess. Well, God can forgive them. Take it to the one that can do something about it. Verse 16 tells us to therefore confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Sometimes we feel like we're uh, independent and we don't want to lean on people. and We don't want to inconvenience them or use them in some way. But the Bible tells us that we need each other. We've got to be bold enough and have the courage to reach out when we need help. And people can't read our minds, right? Yeah? Amen, husbands, right? <laughs> people can't read it. We've got to tell people when we have a problem and when we need help and say, pray for me, I'm struggling with this. And put your side your pride and open up and be humble and, and realize that you can't do this on your own. And we as a church need to realize this because a church that isn't ministering one-on-one -on -one isn't working. If we aren't ministering to each other, you have a ministry and it's the people in this church and in this community. We've got to minister one to another. And the only way that works is if you do it. You, the church, are you doing the work of the ministry? Now, the staff needs to do it, absolutely. Church council needs to do it. The deacons need to do it. But even if all those people were ministering one-on-one, -on -one, it would still be too big. We need you to be involved. You are called to be involved, to find someone to help and to find someone to minister to. If you see someone that's hurting or that's lonely and you wonder what the church is going to do about it, you're the church. When you see a need, you fill a need, you find a way to minister to that person. Do something because the church is people and the church is people ministering to other people. We've got to step up and minister one on one, not just try and hand things off to someone else. Do something. We as the church can't minister to our community unless the church, the people, minister to the community. It's all about the one and others in the Bible. Let those jump out to you as you read your Bible. One to another. Not one to just everyone, because we can't do it. It's too big. It's one to another. Find your one that you can minister to. It's all about the one another's, praying for one another, confessing sin and repenting, getting accountability from one another. Maybe that's you and you need to get to a place where you are putting aside your pride enough to reach out to a mature Christian and say, hey, I need help. I need someone to pray for me. I need someone to be, uh, for me to be accountable to and talk to them about your struggles. The one another's are proof that a church is alive and loving God and loving our neighbors. Verse 17 says, Elijah was a man with a, a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. And then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. This is so awesome. This amazing verse. Why? Because it tells us that Elijah was a man just like us. He wasn't a superhero. Yes, God did some amazing things through him, like call down fire from heaven. But we need to remember that God is the hero of this story, not Elijah. 
It wasn't God that was, I mean, excuse me, it wasn't Elijah that was the great person in this story. It was God. Elijah was just a man, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed fervently and earnestly, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Elijah was a human just like you and me. David, Moses, Abraham, Paul, Peter, Ruth, Mary, they were all just broken vessels like you and I are. But they trusted God, and they had faith, and they fellowshiped with God through prayer, and God did the work. But Elijah prayed, and and the, the heavens were shut, and then he prayed again, and God opened them up again. Now, Elijah just wasn't, you know, doing it for no reason. He was trying to show off God's power, and God had a message for his people that he was in control. And the power of prayer is real, and God makes it available to us today But too often we talk to other people instead of talking to the one that can do something about it. There's just some spiritual drought in your life and there's some dryness in your life. Then pray. God can bring the blessings of rain and spiritual renewal. Maybe you're in a spiritual storm and God can calm that storm in you. Pray. Reach out to him. Hopefully you've been around here long enough to know that I love to stand with you in your prayer request. I I love that. I love to be able to pray with you and to be there for you in the different things uh, that are are going on in your life. But at the same time, you have to realize that my prayers are not any different than your prayers. I want to be there with you. But you can take those things to God in prayer yourself. Francis Chan says this, when you pray, you are praying just like Elijah, just like Moses, just like David. You can have closeness with God just like they did. And when you look in God's word and you see someone crying out and you're like, man, I wish I could, you can do that. Now, I'm not always saying that every miracle in the Bible that, you know, you can just call down like you're some type of superhero and God's some type of genie. No, God is in control and he does whatever he wants to. But you can pray just like these people. Your prayers are powerful. And people that we would call the greatest Christians are still just men and women. God is the one that is great. And God just doesn't want you to hand off your prayers to other Christians, although you should do that and you need to lean on other people. But you can take your prayers yourself boldly to God's throne. You can go right up to the one that created the heavens and the earth. You can go right up the one that formed you out of the dust and you can take your prayers To God. Now, will God always do what you pray for? No. No, sometimes God has a bigger plan at play. And in those positions, you just have to trust him. Hey, look, the same thing goes for studying the Bible. You can read your Bible on your own. And you can get something from God. It doesn't have to come from behind a pulpit. You can own your faith. You can feed your own faith. See, God wants to use each and every one of us, those here in person and those online. He wants to use you for big things. He wants to do big things through you. But I think sometimes we have low expectations for ourselves. When we look at all the sins that we've been involved in, all the times that we feel like we're weak, and we think that somehow God can't use us. But God wants to do big and amazing things through you. I don't know whether that means miraculous things or whether that means just uh, touching someone's life in in a way that is meaningful. But either way, those things are big things. James 5, 19. He tells us that here, that we can change the world and you can change the world. He says, my brothers, if any among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, Let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is an awesome verse about what the church should really be about. Instead of just being a place where we all come and sit together and act like we're perfect, what we should do instead is reach out to each other, especially when we're struggling. Maybe it's a a bad attitude. Maybe it's uh, gossiping. Maybe it's uh, some type of marital sin. We need to jump in and not be judgmental 
and not condemn people, but love them enough to say something and to say, I'm here for you and I, I can help you. I might not have all the words to say, but I can walk through this with you. This is an awesome verse, and it, it tells us that if we uh, can help someone and walk with someone and help them turn from their sin back to God, you can save them from a multitude of sin. And when we save sin and take sin out of the world and that opportunity for sin, we affect people around us too. Not just that one person, but sin breaks relationships. Sin hurts people. And if we can help lead someone away from that sin, we can change eternity. And your life may not go down in the history books that you changed the world. But if you were able to help one person get to Christ, you definitely helped change their world. And when you affect one person's world, you touch a lot of other people too. Their spouses and their children and their moms and dads. My dad was, uh, came to Christ through a Bible study in a Christian bookstore decades ago. And through him and through my mom as well, there's been, uh, his parents came to know Christ. Uh, each of his sons came to grow up in church and to know Christ. And, and now there's grandkids that are involved just through one person. Tori's dad was hitchhiking as a hippie through St. Louis. When someone picked him up off the side of the road, a different time, obviously. He didn't get murdered. That's not the end of the story. Uh, but that person at, with his long hair and his guitar, that person picked him up and said, hey, have you heard about Jesus? And he thought they meant a rock band. He had no idea who Jesus was, anything about that. And that man told him about Jesus. And through that, he got saved. And, and his kids came to know Christ and to grow up in church. And he's been a pastor of a church for 30 years and have, has led multiple people to Christ, hundreds of people to Christ through that one touch, that one hippie kid that probably uh, nobody thought was going to make a difference in the world. And we have no idea how far the touch is that will go. And the differences that we can make in people's lives. That one verse that we share. That one prayer that we pray with somebody. That boldness that we have to not be so timid in our faith. And instead we jump in and give a word of encouragement. That moment that we had courage and we cared can change absolutely everything. Think about how many individuals that Jesus touched and how far those touches went. And we're still feeling the touch decades and, and hundreds and hundreds of years later of, of what Jesus did, with the, and how he affected the woman at the well and Paul and the disciples. So lovingly, speak up to those friends that are involved in sin. Speak words of hope to the suffering. Pray with the sick. Pray with the hurting. Touch someone's lives. As Christians, we cannot afford to be shallow. We've got to ask the hard questions. We've got to say the hard words. Maybe it's telling someone that you care about them and that you love them instead of just being so uh, shallow and, and just talking about the weather. We can make a difference in people's lives. Touching someone's life. You never know how far that touch will travel once God gets a hold of it. There are things that you can do that will echo through eternity. I dare you to start praying for God to open up opportunities for you to speak hope into people's lives and to encourage and to comfort those that are hurting. And then tell God that I, if you'll give me the boldness, I will take those opportunities. I dare you to start praying that every day. God, give me an opportunity to speak into someone's life. God, help me to help change someone's trajectory through your power. Yes, there'll probably be some haters that'll bring up some things that you've done in the past and how you're not qualified to talk about Jesus because you did this and you did that. Well, look at the life of Paul. Look at the life of King David. There's so many things that we can point out in people's lives. Let's, let's confess those things and get those things right, not live in open sin. That's not okay either. But once we get those things forgiven, we become people that are bold and we step out. 
Think about that woman at the well, right? Right before that, she was sleeping around, being promiscuous. And then right after, Jesus told her that she could be saved. Right after, she's running back into the city to tell everyone about what she's found out. None of us are perfect. None of us are worthy of this message, the gospel. Yes, get your sin right if it's open and unrepentant. But after that, run and tell people of that forgiveness that's available. God can use you. So James tells us in this letter that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. You can say you're a Christian. You can be a member. You can you know, do this and you do that. But if your actions, your attitude, and your life don't show it, you need to investigate that. Maybe ask your spouse, hey, is there anything in my life that shows evidence of my salvation? Am I walking with God? And if there's not, we need to investigate what's going on. Faith without works is dead. And he encouraged us to be a doer and not just a hearer. You can know all the the Bible stories that you want, but if you're not acting those things out, then it's dead. It's dead. He encouraged us to not get caught up in materialism and the culture and reminded us that we are citizens of another land and we're strangers in this land. So don't get married to this world. Next, he tells us that we have to stick together, to love one another and help one another. Don't turn on each other. Don't attack each other. Pray for one another. We know that there's power in prayer. So right now, I want you to do something. Uh, If you would, those of you online, those of you here in person, go ahead and drop a prayer request, something big in your life, something that you have emotions about, right? Something that you're worried about. Maybe you can't give too much details, uh, and that's fine. But I want to encourage you to go ahead and do that. You pull out your phone and put them in the comments on there, because we want to be a praying church. And we're going to sing here in just a second, but I want to come up and I want to pray with you about those things. If you're online, if you're here in person, do that. And then I want to encourage you to go and find those prayer requests after the service, pick a few of them and pray for them this week. Find someone that you could reach out to and say, hey, I've been praying for you about that thing that you put up on Sunday. Hey, I want you to encourage you that that God's going to jump in here. And I don't know how it's going to work, but God cares about you. Go ahead, Ted. I know it's weird to, to use your phone in the service. Go ahead. Jump in there. Put a prayer request. Those of you online, do that too. We want to pray together with you. Now, if you do in person, I'm going to remind you, you got to turn the volume down, okay? Or else it's going to be like, you know, blaring. But let's be a praying church. Let's jump out and ask people what they're struggling with and what they're going through. See, the church isn't working if the church isn't ministering one-on-one to each other. It's not working. There's one another's all throughout the Bible. And if that's not you, you need to ask yourself, who is my person that I can minister to? God, lay people on my heart that I can reach out to. We've got to minister one-on-one, and that only works if you do it. A church is simply people ministering to other people people. And that means you have to get involved for us to be able to be the church that God wants us to be. We can take absolutely everything to God in prayer. We can spill our guts. We can uh, talk to him about absolutely everything. So let's pray for each other because a church that prays together can make a difference. And prayer opens up possibilities. James 5 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil and the name of the Lord. We've got to be a praying church to be the church that God made us to be. We've got to minister to one another. We can't just be hearers of the word and not doers. Faith without works is dead. Is there any evidence of our salvation? Works don't save us, but works are evidence. They come after the salvation. This is the wisdom that James has given us. This is the wisdom that he's bestowed upon us. And we need this today. Every head's bowed and eyes closed. 
The band's going to come. Why don't we go ahead right now and take that challenge and ask God to give us some people that we can minister to do. You can't do everything for everyone. But you can find a few people. Not just the same old people that you're friends with and you hang out with them. I'm talking about people that you can uh, minister to with no strings attached. Find someone new. Find someone you don't know that well. Maybe you notice they're struggling. Maybe there's a post on, on Facebook about how hard their day was. Reach out to people. We've got to minister to each other. Prayers of a righteous man have great power. So get those things right in your life. Make sure there's no unrepentant sin, but then talk about Jesus. Tell people what he's done in your life. And reach out to each other. God, I pray you help me, Lord, to have opportunities. God, bring them across my path. Help me to have the boldness to step in. God, to say that word of encouragement that I'm scared to say. Maybe to warn somebody of that sin in their life in a loving way, not a judgmental way. Realizing that I'm just a sinner saved by grace. But loving them enough to care that they're going to get hurt. God, help me to find people to pray with, to pray for, and to minister to people one-on-one. God, I pray you help us to take this wisdom that James has bestowed on us and take it to heart. God, help us to be a church of doers. You know that if we get stagnant, if we stop looking for uh, how you want us to move and work, that what we'll end up doing is we'll just be, end up, uh, be people that are criticizing everybody around us. And when we get bored, we get mean. We'll nitpick each other. God, help us to instead find people to help and find people to minister to. Help us to see the bigger picture. God, help us to find that one so that we can be a one another. Help us to tr- pray for one another, love one another, show grace to one another, and be bold and encourage one another and to warn one another. God, help us to find our people. Help us to be the church you want us to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. We were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, and there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father. And praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory and majesty. Praise forever to the to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation and jesus for our sake you died Praise the Lord. 
Go ahead and pray for these things. If you're going to read through these things, there's some gigantic prayer requests on here. We are needy people that need our God and we need each other. I'm going to read some of these. I may not get to to all of them. Angela uh, Fratt has a a young woman in her life, uh, Kirsten Sendling, with cancer, 17 years old, a tumor in her brain. Uh, Heather Hope said, pray that I can keep my head above water while I work with my students in class and those in quarantine. Uh, Josh Weddle said, pray for an opportunity to speak into someone's life, to change their directory of their life forever. Carrie Davis said, pray for my husband's uh, job is saved or that God will give him a better one. Uh, Rebecca said, uh, William said, pray for boldness to follow Christ wherever he may lead. Jamie Barber said, pray for my son to be able to do his internship in Georgia this summer, and he needs financial aid. Uh, Brenda Bonnet said, pray for my niece with her mental behavior issues. Lou Hortensio said, pray for a new positive, vibrant relationship between the mission and the city. uh, Stephanie Fluharty said, pray for my grandma to heal after a horrible fall this last week. Kyle Campbell said, praying for God to move in my work situation as well as my parents' relationship. Uh, Karen Owens said, pray for my neighbors, Don and Jeannie White. Don's suffering with uh, hearing loss and also uh, some memory issues. Uh, Bonita Totten said, pray for my children and my great-grandchildren. Megan Kroll said, for clarity on Lucy's, their, their baby's hearing loss and how to move forward. Lily Junkin said, please pray for my family, my brothers and sisters, Justine, Jennifer, Andrea, Sam, Xavier, and me. Uh, Wanda Morton said, pray for a friend uh, that has stage four lung and brain cancer. Uh, Marcia uh, Kappas says, pray for my daughter, Shelby. She had a seizure yesterday, an unknown cause so far. We are a church of people. People that need God. And just like I suffer with things, other people suffer with things. We've got to be more bold. We've got to reach out. There are real, big, gigantic things in people's lives that they're suffering through. Jonah Fowler said, pray uh, that the days will get easier. If you know his his mother, Angie, we miss her so much. Uh, Passed away. Pray for that family. Uh, Barbara Barron said Tiberius is failing kidneys. 
her son, we saw on the screen today. Tori said, pray for my anxiety. It's been bad lately. We need each other. And I, I challenge you to go through and write down these things on those comments. Find a couple of them and don't dog, you know, uh, you know, bother people so much, but just let them know. Hey, I'm praying for you. Maybe in a couple weeks, check back. Hey, I, well, how's that going? How's it going with your daughter? How's it going in your life? We are people that need each other and it's too big for the staff to do it, to the council to do it. We need to be people that minister to each other. We are not just a place that we come. We are people that minister to each other. Let's take these things to God in prayer right now. If you're in online, you pray with us as well. Dear God, we just named some gigantic things in people's lives. Some, some scary things. Some things that are going to take a while to get past and get through and get over. God, I know there's a lot of fear and anxiety and, and discomfort and doubts that go along with these things. God, I pray for every single person that uh, had the boldness to share a prayer request. I know that was scary for a lot of them. God, help us to be people that will minister to each other. Help us to love each other enough and care about each other enough that we get past this the shallow emptiness of our speech. God, and help us to actually minister to one another and encourage one another. God, I pray for every one of these people that are sick, the people that are scared, those that have jobs that they're missing, uh, have lost, or, or there's insecurity in the, in the future. God, we pray for these relationships. God, we, you, we need you. We need you. God, we love you so much. God, and we just are trusting you. And you know that you're our only hope in these big prayer requests. God, we're going to praise you already right now for what you're going to do. God, and when the answer to these prayers is us stepping out, God, I pray you help us to be bold enough to be the answer to those prayers. I thank you for, for all you've done for us, God. You've been so good to us. In your name we pray. Hey, we love you. Let's pray a praying church. If you're here in person, you can be seated. We thank you so much for those of you online. We are so excited uh, to have you join us today. Hey, go find a couple of those prayer requests and let's follow through. Let's be the church God wants us to be. We'll see you next time.